Media Foundation for West Africa Organized Forum on Disinformation Peace and Democratic Consolidation in Ghana with the aim of promoting democracy and healthy free expression and access to information ecosystem in Ghana. Over the last decades, there have been overlaps with the fake news and propagandas which refer to many ways that information has caused harm in the public space. To liberal concepts of freedom of expression. A brief survey of measures taken by states to address information discloses a wide diversity of approaches that has stripped legislative regulation and criminalization or less practice steps to educate the public and to expose misinformation through the establishment of task force to carry misinformation. Others aim directly at the authors of misinformation. We in the National Peace Council are deeply concerned about the indisputable linkages between disinformation and violent conflicts. Ghana, like other African countries, is a plural society. There is a conglomeration of diverse ethnic, religious, and sectarian entities. Our fragile social cohesion in our young national entity is complicated by extreme polarization arising from partisan politics. In such an environment, misinformation, particularly in the social media, poses a threat not only to peace, but to the viability of the entire nation. <clears throat> On democratic consolidation, I cannot resist pointing out, ladies and gentlemen, that in 1999, when the Committee of Experts for Freedom of the Media, he formulated the proposals on the freedom and independence of media, the application of my committee, my committee, <coughs> that's the Committee of Experts, was to remove all vestiges of state control of the media and to liberalize the legal regime in both electronic and print media. The fundamental risk of misinformation which seems to threaten the political and social order of our country. Our constitutional <coughs> our constitution expressly proclaims the legitimacy of limiting the stipulated fundamental rights and freedoms in our constitution in the public interest. But in some other countries, the regulation of misinformation is considered as repugnant to freedom of expression on the ground that a democratic society should allow the free market of ideas <coughs> in which the good ideas will ultimately prevail on the bad ideas. My question, you are, ladies and gentlemen, is whether this information or this information which involves a false statement of facts, whether intentional or otherwise, is an idea which is admissible to the market. It is known from the experience of many countries. Ghana has since lost its place. While they may be numerous factors accounting for this, there is no doubt that attacks on journalists have contributed to this decline. Again, there is also no doubt that, doubt that some of these scaffolds between journalists and security agencies are born from the attempts by the security personnel to sanitize the media space. It is for this reason that stakeholders forum of this data is very important. To enable us to discuss and agree on appropriate ways
case, Ghana can build resilience against the negative influence of misinformation and disinformation on national peace, stability, and democratic governance. As stakeholders, we owe it a duty to protect Ghana's democracy, which includes ensuring that citizens are fed with the accurate information to enable them to make informed choices and at the same time, thank the people and the media. Pania dear Mako Casama for Christian Nimuse, Kamuni Binakai, one Jay and Ned in Tokaba. Baby or also saw a Nipa Casa where we asked Dawson. Now Omaka or Casa or Omoka Casa Casa will say, almost all Mutans and Nipa was in a more bopos or Mukaku will say, and Yama be brave. Yareka see a Covid nineteen by ye. And Yama a doctor for me in Jimufo, you won't say a year, Beboy. A bit more hard no master that I can boot you. Send your bear many per a slow idea. No, in Tinipa, be brought Yarene Chio Moa, a be away cool mokra. Just because no almost slow idea was all my year near some coya, or more who be blue YouTube, so say a be cool more. Um, Sandy Mending in a divas in a cock with Jenna baby a ego. Cecilia baby, Jenna Cecilia, and say Ghana. Osha am I a bay and no, and near my cosso a hard drink a crab. Yeah, I am mumping and I could do nothing. A can were brochy or ten or no kind. Say, near me because we were up for so near and in changing moha, a yet sabby a brophobia, a grofabo mopa, and no one by better than her, or more yen near my enfat and yan, you beat me the abagana. Some crofona, so you soon feed ye be Eddie a yes on becky can crofu treble. Ain't he ya cock a drum bamb and so be said, I was say, in your journey who knew who quiet Befasua, Sanya Mano. A bebo home by. Ain't he a no? And a yadrin genuine home. A year national media commission for. I ain't sure no moon be bray. I yet a human be a man, my man be brain, see him dear cosso. Ye shame what? The reason in air corners will be as a sham rank a crank a crap or the bebon home by. And propaganda. They are used to refer to a variety of ways in which information is shared to cause harm intentionally or unintentionally and usually to promote a particular moral or political cause or perspective. It is possible to separate out three clearly different uses of information which fall into this category. Misinformation is informed information shared with intent to cause harm. This information is false information shared intentionally to cause harm. And mal information is true information shared in a way intended to cause harm. The keynote speaker, George, agrees that worldwide uh, the traditional media uh, remain the platforms to verify uh, misinformation or disinformation. However, from maintaining the traditional media, whether it is state-owned or it is private. There's a need for the state to show an interest in its development. And I think once we develop that, uh, you know, adequately, through training of uh, its personnel, and also, uh, if you like, remuneration, proper remuneration of its personnel, and giving it the, the, the required, uh, you know, tools to verify information, uh, as and when they get them. It will go a long way 
to help all of us when it comes to dealing with um, what do you call it disinformation and misinformation but the bigger call that's uh, I see the keynote speaker for example advancing is for us to begin to think about regulating uh, social media and I say that the discussion should be focused on how to regulate the people behind the creation of these platforms instead of focusing on the uh, regular Joe in town who uh, just signs up on these platforms and may abuse or misuse the platforms because there can be a system of reporting between say the people behind Facebook, the people behind WhatsApp, uh, so that they can uh, submit reports on threats that they find on their platforms to our governments, so that our governments are able to perhaps uh, look at the threats based on the reports that they get on a yearly basis or on a quarterly basis, and determine who is abusing the platform in our country or otherwise, and perhaps uh, 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 prescribe sanctions. For example, through their recommendation, such you know uh, people can even be barred from using uh, those platforms. I mean, that can be a way to regulate it instead of focusing regulation on you know uh, the regular person just signing up. Because I believe that we already have in our criminal code uh, Act 29, we have Data Protection uh, Act, we have uh, many other regulations that already deal with the spreading of you know false information for whatever purpose and I think that should be enough. Otherwise we fall into the category of nations that are considered anti-democratic because of the laws that they have passed to govern uh, or regulate social media. That there exists a serious rivalry between Jen Mensah and the NDC, it's not a secret. But the president didn't care, he nominated the person that has been known to have long-standing antagonism with the NDC and we all as citizens looked on. So today he will actually go ahead to nominate active partisan people because with Jane Mensah we didn't know her uh, political affiliation beyond the fact that we knew that she was always in disagreement with the NDC. So what does appointment mean to all lovers of democracy and especially all Ghanaians? It shouldn't just be a question for the NDC to answer. Because the rigging of any election is a threat to the peace of this country. And the threat to that peace will affect everybody, whether you are NDC or not. And that is why it must be a question that we all should seek to answer. Clearly, everything that the Electoral Commission has done since its appointment I mean, the commissioners have done since their appointment, have been to benefit the NPP. They have done that by their words and by their deeds. And this appointment is just going to further that entrenched, you know, position against the NDC and the NDC's ideas and the NDC's thoughts. We will continue to expose this level of bias and we will continue to, you know, galvanize our people and all people of Ghana to support the mission to rescue this nation and to put it back on the road of all inclusive development and progress. And let us also be reminded that the elections will be won at the polling stations and it doesn't matter even if President Akufuado appoints himself as the Electoral Commissioner, the people of Ghana will vote at the polling station. Thank you for watching Nation One TV. Kindly subscribe for more news updates.